Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at transformations of functions using our parent or library function and our knowledge of transformation rules. So starting with our parent or library function, f of x equals x squared, we want to graph g of x, which is negative x squared plus 2. And we're going to start that by describing the transformations that will occur. So I notice that I have a negative multiplier on the outside, and I have a plus 2 on the outside. So outside, I'm going to use the acronym O-V-E-R, or over, to remind me that things on the outside affect my graph vertically. They do exactly what they look like, and they affect my range, or my y values. So I know that a negative multiplier causes a flip, or a reflection. Since it's on the outside, that will be a vertical reflection. And a vertical reflection, an up-down reflection, would go over the x-axis. Now a plus 2 on the outside, I know that plus transformations cause shifts. Since this is on the outside, that is going to be a vertical shift. Vertical means up down, and this does exactly what it looks like, so I know that's going to be up 2. So I'm going to have a vertical reflection over the x-axis and a vertical shift up 2. Okay, so now that I have my transformations described, I want to go ahead and implement those. So it matters here what order we do them in. And what I mean by that is that we need to follow our good order of operations. So when we think about PEMDAS, or order of operations, if we have something caused by multiply, like multiplying by a negative, and we have something caused by addition, order of operation tells us we should do the multiply first. So that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to do my vertical reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each point and I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. Now I've got some handy points here for me. They're just kind of my usual points that I would use with x squared. So I've got negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. Now when I reflect vertically, I can think about multiplying each of these y values by a negative, or I can kind of do it more visually. So if I think about the point negative 2, 4, or I can do that on my new graph over here, negative 2, 4, a reflection over the x-axis says if I'm 4 up, instead of being 4 up, I'm going to be 4 down. So I would have a point here at negative 2, negative 4 now. Taking my point at negative 1, 1 and reflecting, since I'm 1 up, I'll go instead 1 down. Taking my next point at 0, 0, I'm 0 up, so when I try to reflect that, I get 0 down, so that one actually doesn't move based on the reflection. 1, 1, if I'm 1 up, then a reflection puts me 1 down. And 2, 4, if I'm 4 up, then a reflection will take me 4 down. Okay, so there are my points after one of my transformations. That's my vertical reflection. Now I need to take each of those points and vertically shift them up 2. So that just means take each of those points I just created and count up 2 and create a new point. So 1, 2. Taking my negative 1, negative 1, moving it up 1, 2. 0, 0 is going to move up 1, 2. 1, negative 1, moving up 1, 2. And 2, 4, moving up 1, 
to here we have our new g of x graph with both my transformations applied. All right, guys, that does it for this example on transformations of functions. We'll catch you in the next one.